and you're meditating at the same time there's a Dharma talk. 99.5% of your attention should be with your meditation, with a breath. And only half a percent in the Dharma talk itself. The sound is here to act as a fence. If you find yourself losing touch with the breath, the sound of the talk is here to remind you to come back. Stay with the breath. But keep your mind centered right with the breath. You don't have to send your attention out to the talk. If there's anything that's really relevant to your issues, what's going on in your mind right now, it'll come right in. And if it's not relevant, well, it's a distraction. Let it go past. You think about the time when we read about the people who had gained awakening during the Buddhist talks, like the chant we had just now, all those thousand monks who gained awakening, listening to the Buddhist talk. They were paying most attention to their own minds while they were listening. The talk simply nudged them here and nudged them there. But it was the fact that they were focused inside that enabled the talk to make a difference. So stay right here with a breath. And let the talk fade into the background. Unless there's something that's really important, then it'll stand out on its own. Because when you think about it, you don't have much time. Life is short. And you want to make sure you put the time you have to the best use. And the best use is training your own mind, because everything else you do comes out of the mind. Whether it's things you do with the body, words you say with your speech, it all has to come from the mind. Your interactions with other people are going to be skillful or unskillful based on how well your mind is trained. So this is the, should be the prime focus, the primary, first priority. When you're looking at your life, what's important, what needs to be done. There's that famous passage where the Buddha says every night, as the sun goes down, ask, remind yourself, you could die in the night. Are you ready to go? What unfinished business do you have? Well, focus on doing what needs to be done. Focus on what has first priority. So the night won't be wasted. So if death that does happen to come in the night, you won't be all tied up with regrets. Now, sometimes what has to be done is regards our dealings with other people. Sometimes it has to do with our inner work. But right now, it's our inner work. So this is where you should be focused. Same principle applies every morning. The sun rises. We don't just sit there and say, what a beautiful sun. Look at all those God beams coming out of the clouds. Remind yourself, OK, this might be your last sunrise. Do you have any unfinished business? Okay, get to work on what needs to be done. And sometimes the work means putting your mind at ease, putting your mind at rest. This is one of the big paradoxes in the, in the practice. On the one hand, there's a sense of spiritual urgency, a sense of sanwega, that things really have to be done and you can't waste time. But at the same time, what is the path? The heart of the path is concentration, mental stillness, mental ease. So it's learning how to balance those two, using the ease to make a difference in the mind, not just as a place to hang out or to be comfortable, but use this sense of ease that you can develop in the practice as a means for getting better and better insights into the mind, seeing things more and more clearly. That sense of sanguega has to be balanced by confidence, okay? Confidence that when you do make a change in your state of mind, it's going to have an impact on all the rest of your life. So you find many times, once you're more at ease inside, it's a lot easier to deal with difficult people outside, difficult situations outside, because you don't feel so threatened, you're not so caught up. This is why that ability to separate out a little bit is so important.
So that's what we're doing right now, learning how to separate the mind out from its normal concerns, give it a chance to have a space of inner well-being, a space of inner ease, so that you're not weighing it down with your own problems all so much. Once you're not weighing the mind down with problems all the time, not weighing it down with stress and suffering, you find that it can bear the affairs of the world a lot more easily. And then you see what needs to be done, what really has to be done, and you can do it without the sense that you're already overburdened. Who has time for that? All the all the oughts and the shoulds of the world, because you're so weighed down with your own stuff. This is why work on your mind is a gift to other people as well. The less, the fewer burdens you carry of your own, the more you can take on other issues outside. So this is not a selfish practice. It's one of the major misunderstandings about meditation. You think you're just doing it for yourself. If you straighten your mind out, it means you're not subjecting other people to your greed, anger, and delusion. If you straighten your mind out, have a sense of greater sense of ease, well-being. You're not constantly piling all sorts of extra stress and suffering on top of yourself. You're in a better position to be helpful, to show compassion to other people, to have the time, to have the energy, to have the will to help. So this is why meditation has top priority. This is why it's the most important thing that should come to mind when you look at the sunset or when you look at the sunrise. What shape is your mind in? Have you finished your work, internal work? And think of it as a gift both to yourself and to the world, not so much as a duty, but as an opportunity. How many people in how many situations don't have the time or the opportunity to meditate? Here you've got this opportunity. It's your gift to yourself, your gift to the world around you. So make it a good gift. The value of the mind increases as it becomes more and more one. Don't think of when the mind has just lots of stuff inside that it's, it has more value. Remember in Thailand one time I went, was going past a market and there was only one durian, which is a very highly prized fruit over there. There was one single durian in the market and its price was just way out, of, way out of sight. Nobody could buy it because it was so expensive, because it was so rare. You go back a month later and the place is overcome with durian. In fact, they were throwing them to the dogs. It's the same with the mind. If there's only one mind, if there's only one focus to your mind, and that's a lot more valuable. It's a lot more valuable. It's a lot more rare. When you're going to give a gift to the world, give it a rare gift. Give it a gift that has value both for yourself and for the people around you. 